subhuman pig text the mad dog bob lassiter now afternoon three to six on news radio 970 wfla it's out on vegetables very good monday to you that kind of sounds like an oxymoron doesn't it april the third 1989 not only is it monday but it's it's really a messed up monday it's obviously messed up around here it's messed up in my house probably messed up at yours too i don't know about you people but to tell you the truth i've absolutely had it with these jive turkeys in, in Tallahassee and Washington playing with my biological clock. I don't appreciate it at all, and I'm sick and tired of this, you know, once a year, uh, every year, year in, year out, this, this, this ridiculous trying to reschedule oneself on a Monday. And it's actually, it takes a couple of weeks because everything's different. Everything's different. It's lighter in the morning, or no, it's darker in the morning, lighter at night. Ah, it's, uh, ah, phooey. Well, that's not really what I came here to talk to you about today. I came here to talk to you about one of three topics. It doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference to me which one you take. Now, you're going to think that one of them at least is absolutely frivolous and silly. What will be interesting is to which one you believe to be frivolous and silly. My wife doesn't like it when I do this. She says, stick with one topic. Don't give them three things. They're, just, they're not quite capable of dealing with three things. These people are morons. Morons, Bob. Morons. That's what she says. It's not, it's not my view. Not my view at all. No. I don't know about you people, but um, after seeing the television accounts, after reading what was printed in the newspaper, I am beginning, I am beginning to suspect that this professional wrestling stuff may not be on the up and up. I'm beginning to suspect that. <sighs> Yesterday, a man goes into the ring with his body slicked down with chicken fat his hair bleached, a stupid-looking mustache, and he's supposedly, you know, this great big strong goon, and he's got this pre-torn T-shirt on so that he can rip it the rest of the way off. And, oh, I'm impressed, Hulk. Oh, I'll rip off the T-shirt again. Now, it would seem to me that if this was really on the up and up, there is no way that Randy Macho Man Savage would have been able to grab and beat the hell out of this man for the best part of the match. You cannot grab somebody who's sweating and covered in chicken fat. And on top of that, it's pretty damned hard to stand there and keep a straight face looking at this aging, balding person with bleached blonde hair with a bunch of, you know, with a bunch of skinny little nine-year-olds standing around the ring going, Oh, Hulk, oh, Hulk, oh, oh, Hulkamania, Hulkamania. So I am beginning to think this is not on the up and up. And I thought that I would mention that to you. I thought that I would perhaps even solicit your opinions on this. Is there a possibility that professional wrestling may not be for real? A couple of other things I wanted to talk to you about. Like I said, you're going to think that at least one of these topics is frivolous. And we'll leave it to you as to which one you think is frivolous. I also wanted to talk to you about what is referred to in the, in the news as, in an effort to increase their profits, Burger King is laying off 500 people. I mean, do you have some kind of an obligation to stick your nose into this? Do you have some kind of an obligation to say, <laughs> to increase your profits? To hell with your profits. These are 500 people. These people have kids and mortgages and, and car payments. To hell with your profits. You just keep the damn doors open. When times get better, your profits will get better. But in the meantime, you keep those 500 people on the payroll. Who in the hell do you people think you are? Do you have any kind of an obligation to send a message like that to the Burger King people? Or do you really care? I mean, what the hell? It's not you. It's not your neighbor. It's not your kid. It's just some faceless person probably in Miami. Huh. Serves them right for living in Miami, huh? Third and final thing that I wanted to dangle before you this very afternoon. Story yesterday, a bridge in Tennessee fell down. It's not really a a news story. It's becoming somewhat of a common story. And there are others every day, streets caving in here, there, and the other place, water mains crumbling, highways deteriorating. In other words, the good old infrastructure falling apart in this country. It's something that you don't hear anything about. No, 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 no. You never seem to hear anything about it whatsoever. For example, 
some of the bozos that we employ in this state to represent us in Washington, in particular, the two Senate bozos, Corny Mack and liberal, uh, <clears throat> liberal, uh, geez, what is the guy's name? Liberal, liberal Bob something or other, have told us that, uh, you know, basically as they see it, the big problems are Nicaragua and getting a 24-hour propaganda television station, TV Marti, on, aimed at, at Havana, Cuba. Some of the other people in the administration tell us that, you know, we've got to buy more missiles. We've got to buy those invisible bombers that will never know whether or not they work. We also have to buy the very visible bombers that are always seem to be grounded because of something or other, the B ones, and that we need a couple of more aircraft carriers and all the boats that go along with them, and that we've got to spend another zillion and trillion dollars on the FDI and so forth and so on, but the damn bridges are falling down. What the hell's more important to you? And why do you suspect it isn't more important to them? Why is it that... Why is it that they don't care about the bridges falling down or the streets caving in. What do you want to do? You want to get out of Japan, Korea, the Philippines, Europe? You want to set a maximum amount to spend on the military? Or, like I said, do you really think that professional wrestling is on the up and up? Let me give you the telephone numbers. 461-9352. 461-WFLA. In Hillsboro, well, that, obviously that number was in Pinellas. Uh, in Hillsboro, 990-9352, 990-WFLA. Pick in shoes. I don't care. Mix and match if you'd like. Just not so damn sure about that professional wrestling anymore. Just didn't seem right yesterday. Nobody. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. How you doing? Fine, thank you. Let's talk wrestling. Okay. Okay. What if it isn't on the up and up? I mean, it's, it's entertainment. Well, uh, like I, suppose, a soap I suppose that all depends, sir, on whether or not, you know, your favorite wrestler is winning or not. Well, I don't have a favorite wrestler. I mean, I, for example, have my favorite wrestler is Iron Mike Sharp, and I'll tell you right out, right out sir, I'm getting a little bit disgusted with Iron Mike Sharp constantly losing. <laughs> well, his day will come. I doubt it very much. I think it came and went a long time ago. Well, you know, it's like I said, it's like a soap opera. You know, you can pretty much know what's going to happen. And it's entertainment. I mean, are, are you are you suggesting, sir, that you think that this this is not only up and up? Right. I don't think it is. But it's uh, it's what some people like to watch. Do you like you know, to watch? It's it? like watching a magic show. You know what the guy's doing. He's just tricking you. Do you, you like know, to it's watch not it, sir? Real. You know the guy can't pull a quarter out of your ear. You know? Sir, do you like to watch it? Um, once in a while. Once in a while, which probably translates to about nine hours a week. No, uh, no. I would assume, sir, that you are a fan of a large man who covers his body in chicken fat. <laughs> the Hulk. I, yeah. I, I suspect it as much, uh-huh. Well, and I, that, uh, I, I suspect also that you're really, really impressed when he comes out with these pre-torn T-shirts and kind of, you know, rips them off. But the thing is, a man's big enough to rip somebody's head off. Oh, sir, not when you're covered with chicken fat. You couldn't get a good grip on them. <laughs> There's no way in hell he could have beaten Randy Macho Man Savage fair and square covered with chicken fat. Now, on top of that, it's not fair under those hot lights. I'm sure at some point during the match, he starts to, well, he starts to smell, I would think. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been to a wrestling match. Never been to a wrestling match, sir? No. Oh, come on. Now you're trying to pull my little leg. No. No, I've uh, never even watched uh, college wrestling live. Now, never that's even watched college wrestling. That's for real. That's, you know, what? Roman wrestling. Well, wait yeah. a second. Wait, you, I thought you said you never watched it. I have on television. No, no, no. College wrestling. I've seen a, a few matches. You've seen a few matches. Roman Greco wrestling and you are prepared, very entertaining. You are prepared to make a statement, sir, on the air that, you know, it's on the up and up, clearly, even though you've only seen a few matches? College wrestling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sir. Sir, sir, sir. I'm, 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 I'm flabbergasted. Would you, well, I don't think that one college would say, well, this guy's going to win and this other college isn't. Well, why not? Don't on college students like entertainment? Yeah. And, you know, you know, what difference does it really make? Right? Well, they're doing it to, uh, to prove how good they are. <laughs> These people <laughs> in professional wrestling are doing sir, it sir. to entertain and make a buck. Sir, sir, would you really have me believe that a couple of guys show up at the gym on Thursday night in the snow and, and face each other risking, you know, permanent lifelong injury to see which one's the better? In college, yes. Oh, sir. Oh, what a naive man. Ha <laughs> ha! Nah. I right, thank you very much, Okay. Sir.
Unbelievable. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, one line open. 461-9352 in Pinellas, one line open. Let's see which topic just kind of takes over today. Won't, won't that be exciting? More powerful than any toy electric train. Able to... 70 WFLA. Hey. How you doing? Oh, fine. Thank you. You're this is Brian. Great. We wanted uh, to know your name. We would have asked in the first place. Oh, sorry about that. On top of that, your name's probably Tom, and you're fitting about being called Brian. No, I'm in Tommy's produce, though. Oh, okay. So you're, you're half right. I just want to talk about this uh, clue, uh, wrestling thing. Oh, the wrestling thing, yeah. You think it's a little fake? I, I, I you, you have to begin to suspect, don't you? I agree with you, but you have to give them credit. They all are big, and they have to go through some pain of coming off 15 feet up off the top rope or being slammed down the mat. So Could, what? Could you be able well, to do that? I have to give them credit for that. Do you think you'll be able to do that? Have you ever been... Had, sir, have you ever set foot on a professional wrestling ring uh, floor? No, have you? It, yes, I have. It's kind of like leaping into a waterbed. A water pit? Waterbed. A waterbed. Bed, B-E-D. Then why, every time that they get slammed, you hear this, like, this uh, nice wood... Like a brick hitting a piece of wood. Like a brick. It's more like somebody's big foot. A big foot. I, I agree. They they hit the floor when they think they're hitting somebody. But, I mean, have you ever seen um, um, Akeem do are, the body splash? Are, are you talking about the lean, mean, dancing machine? Yes, sir, I am. Oh, one of the finest sir. dancers literally in the world. The finest dancers? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, just like watching that dance? man. Are you serious? Of course I do. He is a dino, my dancer, sir. Oh, oh, are you talking about out on the mat? When he does his dance routine before he fights. Right, sir. Oh. And sometimes even during the match, too. I mean, I, it just, it, it, it gives me palpitations. It gives you what? Palpitations. Oh. Makes my heart beat. Do you... <laughs> okay. Palpitations. Uh, do, you, do you think it's fake when he uh, body splashes on somebody? Body splashes on somebody, sir? When he bounces, uh, just falls on him. I mean, you have to be in shape for that. Well, well, sir, I don't see, you know, how lifting uh, barbells or, or whatever, you know, they do there in the gym, and I do have some very serious suspicions as to what they're doing in the gym, but I don't see how that could possibly uh, make you ready to, to be jumped on by somebody who weighs close to 500 pounds. Yeah, but you have to agree they're in shape, though, right? But again, but again sir, again, I, I remind you that the... The wrestling ring, uh, there's a little bit of give to it. Again, it's, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> having somebody jump on you on a waterbed. Uh, I, I don't know. How, how would they jump on you? Well, sir, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps uh, someday you'll, you'll, you'll have an opportunity to, to jump and be jumped on on a waterbed. Uh, but in, until then, it would be almost, uh, given the constraints of an afternoon program, on a family radio station, almost impossible to, to explain it. Oh, okay, you're talking about... Oh. Yeah. I see. Uh -huh. That's what we're talking about. So you're saying that's how they get jumped on in the net? Well, well, well sir, let, let, let's go back to the, to the real issue here, and that is this man covered in chicken grease. How could he possibly get a good, strong wrestling hold on on a fine athlete? And, you know, you've already pointed out that these, these men are rather large and in good condition. How could a guy covered in chicken grease get a good grip on somebody like Randy Macho Man Savage, a personal friend of mine, too, I will point out, and beat him in the middle of a ring? Well, they, they have uh, probably 100,000 plus out there. They have to give a show. If they just knock him out in the first hit, it'd be no show. Sir, so they have to go out there and give a show, make the audience... Sir, sir have, you ever, have you ever covered your body in chicken grease? No, but I'm sure you have, right? Well, no, sir, I actually, I haven't. It was whipped cream, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the, the, you missed the point, sir. If you were covered in chicken grease, you could not get a good grip on someone. It was, it was the other guy, the guy that won, who was covered in, in the chicken grease. Oh, so you're saying it's almost rigged. Well, sir, I mean, after, after seeing something like that, you know, don't you begin to have suspicions? Oh, I do. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying oh. probably 90% is fat. Yes, sir, but that, that's, you know, we, what we're discussing here is the fact that uh, I, along with some other people, apparently, are beginning to suspect that it may not be on the up and up. Where do you stand? Um, hmm. 
That's kind of a hard question because would you I like think to put you on hold and come back the, to you when you've had it in, you know, an Apple time to you know think it over, or or are you going to take a gut reaction here, right live on the air, regardless of what gut I'm reaction to, held up to public scorn and ridicule? Gut reaction. Uh huh. I think it's fixed. You think it is fixed? Why? Why would you say that? Well, um, I don't know. It's it's not just his match; it's everyone else's. I mean, you know, you kind of you sit there and you watch it and. What's going on there? What's really going on there? Well, when you bring up that aspect of it, I have to more or less agree with you. Uh, time and time again, I have watched Iron Mike Sharp, clearly the larger and superior oh, of the athletes. Oh, and he should be beating everybody. And, you know, people like uh, Leaping uh, Poffo uh, beat Iron Mike Sharp. Everybody beats Iron Mike Sharp. I don't oh. understand. But he's one of the greatest athletes there is. I mean, he's taught me a lot. Oh, I can tell you what. I mean, well, well, he didn't teach too much, though. I beg your pardon. That's that's where I got the whoa from. That comes from Iron Mike. Oh, I know you got that from him. But look at uh, what um uh, that uh, um, lady did to you. Seems to be a problem with that line. Uh, off we go to uh, Zephyr Hills. Zephyr, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Uh, yeah. How you doing, Bob? Uh, fine, thank you. Except for the shoulder and the leg that I had cramp in this morning. It's uh, the leg's pretty much better, but. I, I've, I've never had a cramp like that in the entire leg before. Um, about the wrestling? What do you think it could be? Do you have any idea <laughs> what would bring on a cramp? I have no idea. Mm. Probably too much chicken grease. Well, it's funny. Uh, I did have chicken yesterday. I made a delicious... Uh, I have a recipe for something that sounds ridiculous, but it is a delicious chicken stew with cheese dumplings, <laughs> which is what I made yesterday afternoon, and it was quite good, although I didn't really overindulge in it. I just had a reasonable one-and-a-half portion. <laughs> um... Did you see that match yesterday? No. I just saw some clips of it. Randy Savage was kicking Hulk's butt. That's what I've heard. And I don't know how it happened, but Hulk just got the big boot to him and then the leg... No. Um, no. But what you've got to do is to really get yourself in the mindset that I want to quit, I'm going to quit. And then what Dr. Sobel does is able to help you. Uh, and, and where the real help comes in, at least for me, and I suppose everybody's different, but for me, quitting is easy. Staying off them is hard. Okay. Uh, my question was, um, I think you're kind of getting a little commercialized in your program. Oh, I'm, how's that? Um, just, you're, you're doing the smoking thing, Dr. Sobo, mm -hmm. the, uh, restaurant, the, uh, mm -hmm. car wash. Mm -hmm. uh, mortgage company. Mo the mortgage company. Air conditioning, uh, duct, uh, cleaning service. Damn, you're doing more than I thought. Um, I noticed that when Paul Harvey first started, he, he did the same thing, and then progressively he got worse and worse. Uh, you're not going to do this, are you? I'm not going to do what? He Paul Harvey show? No, no, no. More, more commercials and more commercials and more commercials. I, I know you get paid for it, right? Of course. I have approximately 10 avails uh, for live commercials in a three-hour show, and I'm currently doing, I believe it's eight, so there are um, only a possible two more. Only two more? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, it just—it was just, you know, I just noticed it was It's, it's the name of the game, you know. Let, let's be honest about it. It's the name of the game. This is a very, very expensive uh, business to operate. Yeah, that's true. You know, I'm the one on the air uh, right now. I, I guess, you know, in essence, you, from the viewpoint of the, the listener at home, it looks like there are basically four of us. But there are damn near 100 people behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. That's and, true. you know, it, it takes a lot of money to keep a radio station running, and that's how we get it. Yeah, well, I, I, I guess it's like the ad in the paper. Um, that you put in there. You're not paying for it. It's all the advertisements, publics and whatnot to join. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, in the newspaper, yeah. the people who buy the prescription aren't really paying for it. It's the advertisements. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Right. Basically, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess you just cleared up my mind there. I just want to say that I just thought you were getting kind of commercialized. Uh, thank you very much. Bye. Take care. Music to my ears. Two lines open, one in each county, 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 4619352 in Pinellas, Hudson. Hudson, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, Bob, you're not getting too commercialized. Well, thank you, sir. Yes, and um, I just wanted to say that for several years I worked at the wrestling matches in a capacity that's not important to speak about, but definitely I agree with you, definitely showmanship and definitely uh, a lot of faith. I do think after uh, observing the wrestlers, pull from their sweatbands, their bathing suits, their mouths, the different, you know, these little, they have little capsules that they fill up with blood or some type of dye. Oh, for sure. Say it ain't so. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've seen it many times being pulled out. I've seen it being spit out many times. 
many times. And they wipe it all over them, and they come out of their mouth, and it looks like blood's being co- spitting out of their mouth. And what it is is a capsule they bite. Oh, no. Absolutely. Bob, think about possibly having a wrestler on someday. Just on your show as a guest. Oh, I've, had, of- I've had several. Great. Well, actually, well, no, I've, I've had it. one several times is what it amounts to. Sure. I've had Randy Macho Man Savage on three times. Yeah, well, anyway, I... I brought Miss Elizabeth. Yeah, I appreciate you, Bob, and, and you're doing a great job. Again. And thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. I mean, you know, the last time he came, he didn't bring Miss Elizabeth. And if he really thinks I'm going to do anything to promote his career without at least getting a chance to see Miss Elizabeth, well, he can think again. One line available. It is in uh, Hillsboro, 990-9352. St. Petersburg. Hi there, St. You're on air at 970 WFLA. Thank you, Robert. I just wanted to say the war has been over now for almost 50 years. I sure would like to see everybody and everything come back home. That's about it. Okay. You didn't want to explain that uh, to any of us? You just like to keep that, you know, secret meaning to yourself? No, I think it's, it's pretty obvious, really. We defend all their sea lanes. We carry all their front lines for them. Uh, under the Marshall Plan, we had uh, we had footed them totally. Uh, that's why to compete with them in the market, you know, there, there's really no fair way to compete with these people. Um, that's really all there is to it, other than the fact that... Uh, I think that's almost half of our defense budget uh, yes, it between is. Europe and the film. I could be wrong. Uh, no, you're, you're quite right. It's just about half. And I, I'm, re- I'm really sick of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I just about would be willing to say, hey, you know, to Japan, why don't you take the whole thing over? You can go ahead and run the place. Uh, and we'll pretty much let you do what you want to do because actually if they do rearm, they'll, they'll do what they want to do anyway. <laughs> And once they take a piece of territory, you won't tell them to, all right, it's solved, go home. You know, it doesn't work. But I all, you know, I met a couple of people from over in, what do they call it, the East Block. And by talking with them, everything I could derive at was all we do is serve to make a whole lot of people on their side of the fence real nervous. It's not that they are not our friends, uh, that they are not especially people that, you know, they are. Um, in a political sense, they, they probably aren't even really nice. But uh, I don't think I don't really think their main gig is, is to stand there and, and worry about you know whether they want to take over the rest of Europe or not. I, I don't even I don't think knowing what they would know now, I'm sure it would it would be a management. Uh, so might it be fair to say that you kind of stand up on the side of let's you know, repair the bridges as opposed to police world. Well, all this all this time, what we really should have been doing, I, I'm not saying we should have ever tried to hold joint um, military maneuvers with the Soviet Union or any of those people. What we should have done is say, all right, we're getting ready to leave, and, and it's really going to be up to you guys to get along the best way that you can. And, and instead of, in other words, all, all we did is try to make another gang over there. And, and have them feel like, you know, well, we've all got to stand up to the big red bear. So may I assume that you, you are, you come down on the side of let's repair the bridges at home? <laughs> Among other things, yeah, that, that would be, that would probably be one of the first. Well, if you'll recall, it all started out by my mention of, you know, the bridges yeah. falling down and things like that. Thank that you, I was, Bob. You know, Trails, cousin. Or inclined to repair the bridges. And, uh, so thank you ever so much. Uh, Don Richard standing by the WFLA News Desk. Donald? Yeah, I heard a comment about um, using uh, capsules and what, what what that would do where they would splat that upon their forehead or whatever with mixture with their perspiration and that would come down looking like blood. Well, though there's something you just said that I, I, in thinking about it, would have been a little bit difficult. You said that the good guys, the bad guys all use the same dressing room. Yeah. Well, I suppose it would have been a little well, bit... Well, I mean, they use the same areas, yeah, and if you'd but, meet them in person... But wouldn't I it have mean... been a little bit awkward and yeah. possibly caused an awful lot of fights if you had, you know, two dressing rooms and one said good guys and the other said bad guys? Well, they they, just, they put on, a like, a title, I guess it is, that, you know, they're going to be a bad guy, or they take the bad guy position, or they'll take the good guy position. Yeah, but nobody there likes to be thought of as a bad guy, and if, if you were forced to change your tights in a, in a room that said bad guys, you'd probably object to it, wouldn't you? Oh, well, these guys, it's just, it's entertainment, though, and, they, and they're getting paid good money for it, and uh, whatever was making money in their pocket, I'm sure, I guess they're not going to go against you're, it too You're much. avoiding the issue here, and the issue is, 
would you not object to being asked to change into tights in a room that said bad guys? Oh, sure, exactly. I so, know you, you know, how else could you possibly then rectify the situation except to let both the good guys and the bad guys dress in the same room? Right. Well, I mean, back then, I don't know, there was guys like uh, Bobby Hercules Graham. He used to be uh, noted as a, quoted as a back, bad guy, I guess, or one of the bad guys. And years later, he turned... Uh, he dropped one of the part of his name or something. Came he was on the good guy circuit. Well, okay. Start so all in the a case like that, that, where do you ask that guy to dress? Pardon? In a case like that, where do you ask him to dress? <laughs> so you'd have to. Everybody would have to dress in the same room. And just because they dress in the same room doesn't mean it's rigged. Yeah. But no. And also, I don't remember hearing a comment on a TV talk show that was several years ago. It used to be a show called Mike Douglas Show, and they had a couple professional wrestlers on there that were retired. And they say one of the prerequisites is that they do have to go to a stuntman school before they can get into the pro circuit. So? Uh, so, I mean, that could help explain on some of the way they take their falls and that. And it's also noted I've, uh, to several that I've talked to, they say their greatest fear is the fans and not the other opponent. <laughs> do you think that somebody helps Hulk Hogan get all greased down like that? Or do you think he can reach, you know, behind his back and over his shoulders and, and cover himself, or do you think that uh, he maybe asks one of the other wrestlers in that dressing room to help him put the chicken fat on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, no, I just wanted to state out a couple comments there for you there. Uh, thank you Let's very take much. Take care, Bob. Okay. We love when he gets them just, just, just babes like that from the Midwest on this program. 990-935. I mean, he's going to go home, and he's going to talk about this day for the rest of his life. 990-935, two in Hillsboro. And a guy kept saying to me, oh, well, you couldn't have a sign on the door that said, bad guys. I don't understand. He seemed a little weird to me. Four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. Four six one WSLA. Tampa, hi Tampa. You're on the air. Ah, pity poo. Tampa couldn't hold on. Such is life. Hey Tampa, <clears throat> stick it in your ear. You know what I mean? Safety Harbor. We like a challenge. Hi safety. Okay. Okay. What? Oh, I'm on the air. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, dang! You sound different over the phone. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about both of your subjects. Uh, the wrestling thing is definitely fake. Nobody could live through the blows these guys are supposed to be taking. Well, sir, obviously they do live through them. Yeah, so it's fake. Right? Well, I don't know, sir. I've, I've, I couldn't speak I mean, to uh, some, ever, some of these guys are the supposed to be using karate and stuff. Uh-huh. Well, you know, uh, those blows are deadly. There's uh -huh. no way anybody can live through the blows these guys are taking. So it has to be fake, right? No, it doesn't have to be fake. I mean, I suppose somebody could live through them. What? Well, somebody has to be able to live through them, sir. I mean, you know, for example, they couldn't have developed the blows if, if you know, the people that were developing them on kept dying. It would have been very difficult to uh, say, okay, bring in five more guys as we work on this one, and, you know, carry five guys out. So, so somebody, you know, somebody's got to be able to live through them. Well, I mean, but if you're going to do it full force, somebody's going to get hurt really seriously. Uh-huh. Well, if you're covered in chicken fat, you know, maybe the, the, the blows kind of glance off. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, about the other subject, about yeah. military spending. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I think uh, the military is wasting a lot of money. And um, what I think they should be doing, if they're supposed to be pre protecting us, and they're always uh, crying about the jails being overcrowded and everything, uh, they need to protect us from the people on the street who are robbing us and... Uh, everything else. Okay. Instead of spending money on uh, invisible bombers. <laughs> that seems to make a lot of sense to me. I thank you very much. Okay, Take care you. there, safety. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461-9352 in Pinellas, Port Richie. Hi there, Port. You're on the air. Hi, Bob. Hi. Um, I have definite proof that wrestling is fixed. Definite proof that wrestling is fixed. How's that, sir? Well, I used to live next door to a professional wrestler. And uh, I... Well, oh, sir, I live next door to an accountant, but that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, uh, two and two isn't four. Well, I, I understand that, but... Um, well, he... We, we lived in Minnesota. Um, that's where I'm from. And I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect. Oh, of course. Of yeah. Course. <clears throat> Mr. Perfect's father lived next door to us. I used to buddy around with Kurt when I was younger. I'm so sorry to hear that. <clears throat> yeah. Well, anyway, he used to have... Um, all the professional wrestlers over the house for barbecues and such, and cookouts in the backyard, and all the good guys were mingling around with the bad guys, and it was a, it was really something. Um, 
<laughs> so, sir, did it ever dawn on you that the good guys might have just been just been trying to spread goodwill and good cheer? Well, uh, I mean, just just because they're polite and eat hamburgers with bad guys doesn't mean that you know wrestling's fixed, does it? Well, not really. But we we got into some conversations with uh, Larry the Axe a few times, and uh, he used to tell us how he would hide razor blades, little tiny little blades, inside their their fingers, uh, and cut each other on the forehead. Uh, he had scars on his forehead. I asked him how he got them, and he said that he cuts his own forehead with a little blade, uh, makes himself bleed. Uh, I said all the wrestlers have them. So if you look real close at their foreheads, they all have little scars on them, and they hide little uh, bands, and you know, inside their like wristbands, they hide little blades in there. I'll be darned. Well, I thank you very much. Okay, Bob. Take care. It sounds like a good time up there in Wisconsin, Minnesota, wherever it was. at the hour 4 o'clock. Welcome back. Hour number 2 from Monday, April the 3rd, 1989. An interesting first hour. Kind of interesting, uh, at least uh, from where I sit. I, gosh, I can only really recall one person who, who, with any degree of fervor whatsoever, stood up for the integrity in professional wrestling. Most other people seem to be saying, whoa. I mean, I think this stuff is, you know, not on the up and up. And I'll tell you, after WrestleMania over the weekend, I'm beginning to fall into that category myself. So there was, there was another topic that I had brought up that no one bothered to touch upon. What the hell? I have utterly no shame whatsoever. So therefore, I will come back and touch on it again. News story today, quote, at least quoting from WFLA News. In an effort to increase their profits, Burger King is laying off 500 of its employees. In an effort to increase, not in an effort to keep from going bankrupt, but in an effort to increase their profits, Burger King is laying off 500 of its employees. Let me, let me see if I can help explain this to you. Let me see if I can put it into the proper perspective, into the, the personal perspective in which it really belongs. You see, Burger King is owned by Pillsbury, which is owned by a foreign corporation which bought it last, I believe, January. And, of course, one of the first things they did is come in and said, well, we're not making enough money here. Cut, cut, cut. And so this foreign corporation, first of all, is laying off 500 of your fellow citizens. Yes, I know that you don't know any of them by name in all probability and that, that you wouldn't recognize one if you tripped over him in the gutter, where you may one of these days. But you see, there's something else. Remember how pissed off you got about the congressional pay raises? The congressional pay raises amounted to roughly 12 cents. That was your, that was your cost. 12 cents per man, woman, and child in this country is what the congressional pay raises would have cost. Well, let's look at it this way. Most of those 500 people laid off at Burger King are probably going to be in the state of Florida because that's where the headquarters is. Yes, yeah. your friends and neighbors are right here in Florida. And so that Burger King can increase its profits those people are going to go on unemployment. And some of them will go on welfare. And some of them will get food stamps all coming directly out of your pocket so that Burger King can increase profits. Or, isn't that great? If those 500 people got $200 a week for 26 weeks, it would cost you twice as much as the congressional pay raises did. What do you think about that? Do you have any obligation to do something? 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 4619352 in Pinellas. Clear, water high clear. You're on the air. Mr. Lawson? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, I'm going to talk about boxing. You like it? You enjoy boxing? No, sir. I don't like boxing at all. Now, you, what do you think a wrestler would really do against a boxer? Sir, I would have the vaguest idea. Now, I guess a lot depended on, you know, where are we talking about a flyweight boxer versus no, 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 I'm I'm a like giant or, or he, what, sir? He's like the time Muhammad Ali fought that Japanese wrestler, you know? He wasn't a Japanese wrestler per se, sir. He, you know, was a, a martial arts person. Yeah, yeah. But right, you, yeah, yeah. And he damn near killed Ali, too, by the way. That's why I say, like, you take, you take Tyson now, a good wrestler now, if he got in condition, I, he'd probably knock him off. He knocked Tyson off, too. I, I wouldn't know, sir. I, I'd rarely, I rarely speculate in fantasy. 
No, I mean, the, like you say, the, the, the ring of a wrestler is like a waterbed. So you take a regular ring like a like a boxer goes into, and a wrestler goes against a boxer, I, I think a, a wrestler knock them off. Well, that all depends there on whether or not the boxer picked up the wrestler and continued to beat his head into a harder ring. No, he, he, he <clears> never, never Might have it. some effect, uh, but he, outside of that, I'm not really sure what kind of an effect All that wrestler has to do is get hold, and that's all. With holds. Uh, well, I, I don't see where the softness or the springiness of the other of the ring would have any real effect. Oh, he's speed. Oh, uh, he's knocking right off. I'll see well, you later. If, you, if you'd like to think so, sir, it's okay with me. Hey, I think that our senior citizens should occupy their time with something. 990-9352 in Hillsborough, 4619352 in Pinellas. Holiday. Hi there, Holly. You're on the air at 970 Aww. WFLA. Bob, you don't know how good it is to hear from you. Well, I thought you called me. I, oh, I did. Oh, okay. uh, I'm an old, old listener from that other station. Ah, I've been going yes, for two station. years, came back Friday, and turned the radio on this afternoon and found you. I'm so glad to hear you. Gone for two years? Where'd you go? New Jersey. I mean, what, you had trouble getting out? No, my, hus my, my husband got transferred back up north. Oh, I see. And I'm down here visiting on vacation, and the first thing I do, I turn the radio on, I heard you, and it was so good to hear you. Well, where, whereabouts in New Jersey? A uh, little place called Long Branch. Long Branch. Uh, yeah, I'm about familiar with it. 15 miles south of Asbury. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. Nice country. But what I called for, other than to tell you how good you sound, is that not too long ago, a couple months ago, the New Jersey State Sporting Authority put out a notice in the newspaper. In the state of New Jersey, you may not call wrestling a sport. No. Is it, a, it is an entertainment in the state of New Jersey. Well, believe it or not, even in, even in Florida, r rumor of that story made it down here. I was rather amused that the good old state of New Jersey apparently has so little to do with the time and, and resources that it has and its legislature that they had spent actual time debating this. Yeah. I thought it was funny myself. I mean, even in Florida, we haven't gotten that strange yet. No, well, just a lot of them haven't figured it out yet, though. Well, yeah, I Evidently think listening you have to a good point people. there. <laughs> good, good point there. But I just want to let you know that I'm down for a couple of weeks, and I'm so glad to be able to hear you. Well, I thank you very much. Because I've told people up north about you. Mm -hmm. You've got to get on some sort of national network because you're great. Well, thank you. Take you care. Have, when you were on nights at the other station, you entertained many of my nights at home when my husband was working. Well, I've tried tried very hard in my lifetime to entertain women at home in the evening, but not with as much success as I would have liked to have had. But I thank you very much. Okay, take care, Bob. Bye-bye. Off we go to Clear Water. Hi there, Clear. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. Hi. Well, Mary was right. I guess you probably figured that out by now. <laughs> They're morons. <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't believe that all these people are calling about wrestling. Nobody cares that 500 people got laid off from Burger King. Nope, nobody does. No, no nobody cares. Not the, a let soul. the bridges fall down. The roads, roads have potholes. Oh That's well. That's right. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> and go to wrestling matches. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Or it's no wonder you drink black Russians when you go fat. home. <laughs> Maybe if I covered my body in chicken fat and bleached my hair blonde, you know, I'd get people to listen to me about Burger King and, and the bridges and stuff like that. Maybe. What do you think? You think I should do that? That might be fun, actually. Oh, well, it would be interesting. I just don't understand how he keeps the chicken fat from going rancid. I don't know. I don't. Oh, I, I mean, don't have you ever smelled to... bad chicken fat? <laughs> oh, worse than worse than you can believe. I don't pay attention to any of that, but. I just thought it was rather interesting the whole first hour that there was only one person who addressed the topic of the people getting laid off at Burger King and the, and the bridges falling down and everybody else is worried about wrestling. It's discouraging. It's no wonder you drink black Russians when you go home, Bob. Well, no, I actually, I don't drink black Russians at home anymore. I drink those out. Uh, at home, I drink Diet Coke and vodka. Oh. That's what I drink Together? Now. Yes. Oh. That sounds kind of strange, Bob. <laughs> well, it's a long story. Oh, okay. Well, I, some other time. I thank you very much, Claire. Right, thank you. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro, four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. Well, hokey smoke him if it isn't the Gary McHenry song. Gary, is that you? Hi, Bob. It is you, Gary. I'm I'm stunned that you actually came into work on a Monday. I would have thought that you know. After all the fox chasing all weekend long. Oh, boy, Bob, there was very little chasing. Very little very chasing. Very little chasing. Uh, you but just gave up this weekend, figured it wasn't worth your effort, you know? Do I sound exhausted to you or what, Bob? Well, you sound like most people do on the Monday after they change the clock. I went out Monday 
I rubbed my body down with chicken fat. I took a pair of leotards and cut out the rear end. I grabbed the hedge clippers. I went out in the median of the interstate and flexed my muscles. Nine foxes came by swearing I was Brutus Beefcake. It was amazing, Bob. Well, well what happened then? <clears throat> Nothing. They got a closer look and drove on. Traffic on the Howard Franklin. I tell you, it just gets harder and harder every single day. I, with life, there are so many decisions to make. And now the people at Howard's going and complicate your life even further. You see, there are two Howard's locations now. There's the one at 533 South Howard Avenue. Great lunches, dynamite dinners, happy hour. And then, of course, there's the new Howard's, located in the NCNB building in downtown Tampa. Now, the luncheon menu at both Howard's is, in essence, the exact same great food. Massive portions, good prices, prompt service. I mean, things like, well, just, just the sandwiches alone. Ham and Swiss, turkey breast, roast beef, smoked turkey, pastrami, meatloaf, chicken, tuna fish, or egg salad. Of course, the soups, the French onion, the soup of the day, the Cajun gumbo. And then, of course, at night at Howard's at 533 South Howard, those hamburgers that are just gigantic. And then there's the happy hour at the new Howard's and the NCNB. But it, it all gets very, very complicated, doesn't it? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Well, basically, you can't go wrong. Howard's for lunch, either location. Howard's for happy hour, Monday through Saturday at 533 South Howard, Thursday and Friday, downtown Tampa. By the way, I don't really know that there's anything to this. We're going to have to check into it. However, rumor has it that Yahtzee, Yahtzee is starting to catch on. Unbelievable at the Howard's in downtown Tampa. We'll keep you appraised to that. Uh, by the way, if you stop by, please. Tell them that I sent you Howard's. Good folks, good food. Off it is now to uh, Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello. Hi. Uh, okay. Well, I'm uh, going to come in and complain about this Burger King deal. Yeah, what's that? What, what about it? Well, I think it's totally ridiculous. What, what's totally ridiculous? Well, if anybody ever figured out how much a president of that company makes a year. Well, I'm sure lots of people have, sir. It's public knowledge. Well, then why don't, you know, I mean, he wants to cut back and fire a bunch of people. Right. And put them out on the dang street just so that he can get some more money put in his house and he can drive his yacht and his big, uh... So what you going to do about it? Lincoln and stuff? Well, I ain't going Burger King no more. I don't more. know he's got a Lincoln, by the way. Huh? I don't know that he has a Lincoln. Well, I Make don't know. Sure he's he probably yacht. got some fancy Probably has a big house, though. Huh? Mm. Oh, that's okay, sir. Go ahead. Well, what I'm saying is that, man, here, here's this guy that's filthy rich and money's going to the rich. And what he's doing to these families is totally ridiculous. I mean, a guy can lose his job. So and what are you going to do about it, sir? Huh? So what are you going to do about it? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do about it. I won't go to Burger King no more. Oh, that's, that's an intelligent thing to do, sir. That's not going to accomplish anything except perhaps put more people out of work. Well, what else could I do about it? I mean, you know. Well, you might drop them a postcard and say, I uh, I don't like this. Well, if That's I knew his address, I might do that. Why don't well, you... how, how about Burger King, Miami? It'll work. Why don't you put it up there? Is that where the headquarters is? Sir, I, 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 don't, I don't organize things. Yeah. You know, so, so don't look for me to, to quote, unquote, put it out there. Well, just, but do, do you re people really realize what it might do to families, you know? I mean, uh... Well, sir, you apparently don't, because bro boycotting Burger King is about the worst thing in the world you could possibly do. Well, why should I patronize them when they are hurting people? Because I just got finished telling you, sir, you'll put far more people out of work by doing that. That would be a really dumb thing to do. Well, I don't know if I agree with you there. But, uh, you know, a lot of these people, when they get out of work... Uh, sir, uh, well, sir, let's see, if we can't, let's see if we can't come to some kind of an agreement here. If you didn't spend your dollar at Burger King today, that means Burger King would have one fewer dollars, right? Which means they would have fewer dollars in, with which to pay people. Well, how do, how do they justify something about laying off people just sure, to so they get how they, more money? Sure, to hell with how they justify it. That's, that's relatively unimportant. What, what you should be interested in, in doing is getting those 500 people back on the payroll. Well, right. so you mean more people ought to go to Burger King so they can get back on? Uh, no, sir, it's not, not, not at all what I said, is it? it? I mean, it doesn't even come close to what I... How do you stand on wrestling? How do I stand on wrestling? Yes. Um, <laughs> wrestling is just a... It's a good game. Good game. You kind of enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you like the guy who, who, who smears his body in chicken fat? Oh, I've seen him before. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay, thank I... you very much. We really appreciate the, in appreciate the input. Uh, Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Uh, Robert? Yeah. Hey, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Long time listener, first time caller. Great. Okay, to make it short and sweet. Uh, number one, my philosophy on, on the Burger King situation. Okay, what I, my personal opinion is that I'm a little nervous, Bob. First, I, I don't That's know what okay, to say. You're doing fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, is that all these big companies come, coming to Tampa or any place in, in the U.S., they, they tend to buy out the big companies and let all the little ones go. I, something's wrong there. We have to do something about that. I mean, why, why can't American people run the American business and don't worry about the other people buying them out? But it's, it boils down to one thing, the dollar bill. Everybody's trying to make a buck quick, and this is what the same situation here. That's, what, that's what's happening. I'm sorry, you can't hear me. I'm on a pay phone. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yeah, go ahead. And, uh, and, and, and by the way, I miss Dick Norman. He's, I really miss that guy, and uh, I'm kind of sad to hear about him, but and I'm, I, know I should have called a long time ago, but that's my own personal opinion. I think that we should all get together. I mean, American people buy American products, and the Burger King situation, I, I, I just, like you said, there's hardly no answer to it, no right well, I beg your pardon, there's a real big answer to it. One of the things that we can do is to discourage these incredibly stupid takeovers where companies come in and have to squeeze the gazungas of the company they take over because it's always the little guy that ends up getting squeezed. And if we, can, if we could, you know, convey a message to the guys in Washington that we're a hell of a lot more concerned with corporate takeovers in this country than we are with television Marti in Cuba, then maybe 500 people wouldn't be out of work. Yes, sir. That's exactly. That's basically what I'm trying to, to say. But I, don't, I, I just, I, I can't. I don't know how to phrase it. But, well, it seems to me you but, just did. Well, I'm, I'm what I was to say. You have a great show, Bob, and uh, I'll keep listening to you. Thank you very much, Don Richards, standing by at the WFLA News Desk. Don. And this news brought to you by Midway Airlines. Their spirit will lift you. Closing arguments underway now in the William Cruz trial in Bartow. Cruz's attorney says if Cruz isn't crazy, no one is. Prosecutors arguing that Cruz planned the rampage two years ago in which six people were killed, ten wounded. Jury will start to sort it all out in the morning. Tampa police say two drivers who say their cars hit 27-year-old Sean Tuzzi on the Courtney Campbell Causeway have come forward but have not been charged. Police think the first of three cars to hit the Dunedin woman may have killed her last night. One man, 35-year-old Philip Reese, dead. Another 36-year-old Jeffrey Leisure in critical condition after a bullet splattered robbery in Tampa this morning. Police say two men kicked in a door the, of the apartment the two men were sharing, started shooting. I want to talk to you about both your, your topics. Um, okay, I, actually they're somewhat related. All right, really, I, you know, I see a lot of similarities. Uh, with the uh, Burger King issue, I think what you have here is um, a, just a classic illustration of what the corporate system's doing to uh, America because for years we've had um, uh, well, what I call the, the NBA mentality running uh, corporations with uh, just complete disregard for the human side of their business and it's just a total emphasis on the bottom line. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's supposed to cave in for the investors. Oh, the poor investor deserves a fair return. He put up a dollar. What about the poor son of a bitch that worked there for 20 years? Well, that's it. I, I think we, we really uh, ignore the value of human capital. And I think that is, if you want to point to the reasons for the decline in, in American productivity, it's, uh, I think the worker feels unimportant. He, he feels uh, used, and uh, he knows he's expendable. And therefore, I don't think we get the output from the worker that we did in the past when he felt that uh, he was appreciated and rewarded for what he did. I don't know. They always told me that, you know, if you lose your money, don't worry. You can always earn it back. But once your life is gone, it's gone. Well, we, I think we just have to get to where people realize that we, um, until this century, the country is basically self-employed. And when you work for yourself, you'll take care of yourself. But we really need to get back to self-reliance where we, we realize the government isn't going to Yeah, but you're talking about an agrarian society. That's no longer the case. It's a pipe dream to think that we can all work for ourselves. We can't. Well, no, I agree with that. We, we can't all, but to... For as many people who are able to, I think you need to realize that no one is going to take care of you like you, you will take care of yourself. And you can't count on your employer. You can't count on your government. You can't count on anybody to come through for you like you will. And well, of course not, but you can do things to encourage your employer, to encourage society to be a tad more thoughtful of your needs and concerns. Well, that's true. But, but what you're looking at is the people that are at the top that are running don't. 
care. And you, and you better realize that this illusion of security with the corporation is, is just a, an illusion and that you're two weeks away from being out the door any time they, they see fit. Well, that's true, but if we would all let Burger King know just how much we thought of this deal, and not through a boycott, but simply by maybe the next... Maybe even going out of your way to go in there, when otherwise you might not have and saying, Could I see the manager, please? Yeah, people need to speak up. Well, um, on, the other, on the other issue, um, I'm really... I'm, I'm disturbed, and I have to be honest, that's really what motivated me to call today, because, you know, we, I disagree with you on a lot. I mean, I can disagree with you about minimum wage and, and affirmative action. I mean, we can have political differences, and um, I disagree with you about religion. I mean, you, you can... So you're starting to suspect it might not be on the up and up, too? No, no th th this is what really burns me, is the fact that with all of our differences aside, and we have many, I probably disagree with you more than I agree with you, but we've had a couple of common bonds that have, have just made me feel like there's a kindred spirit there. Yeah. And I feel total absolutely betrayed by your your irresponsible uh, behavior today allowing the integrity of professional wrestling to be called into question with these wanton attacks that are totally unfounded. I mean, you, you're becoming the National Enquirer of Talk Radio. Well, well, sir, I, I beg to differ with you. After viewing the clips from WrestleMania 5, I guess it was yesterday, I simply do not see how a man who was covered in grease could have gotten, you know, good, definitive holds on someone like Randy Macho Man Savage. How, how do you know that life. was grease, for one thing? I think the man just perspires heavily because he's out there giving 100% like any true professional athlete would. Well, sir, you, you no doubt have seen him come into the ring, and when he comes into the ring, he's already covered in grease. He's just excited with anticipation of the competition. Sir, 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 and on top of that, how could Macho Man, how could any man stand there, look this, look this cartoon character in the face with a bleached blonde balding hair and, and the whole bit, and not snickered? If, you know, a real man would have just, just, just laughed. See, but I, I'm just, I'm astounded because all these years I've, I've listened to you and I thought, well, all the other, all, all your viewpoints on all these other issues, uh, well, we can disagree, but at least. I knew what kept me going was my ultimate belief that you understood the essence of professional wrestling and, and the reality that well, we experience well, then, with sir, each match. Sir, I'm, I'm literally down to a handful of seconds before I must move on with the program, but then allow me to bring this to your attention. Do you really and truly believe a good-looking fox like Miss Elizabeth would have had anything, anything whatsoever to do with Hulk Hogan? No, I, I rest but, my but, case. Sir. Well, let me make one last point. If you're questioning professional wrestling, what is next? Do you, do you think that the brain damaged snowbirds now maybe were just a little bit disoriented? Maybe that they really did know what they were doing? Sir, I mean, now, is that now, what now follows? You, sir, now you stretch my credibility, and I'm going to terminate this conversation. Don Richards standing by at the WFLA news desk. Back we are before the singers are even finished. For some strange reason, I thought we were going to Gary McHenry. My mistake. No, 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 no. Don't look like that, Flacky. No, it's me. It's me, I think. No, I'm not sure. Uh, well, whatever. Let's take some phone calls. Two lines open there, both in Pinellas, 461-9352. 461-WFLA Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh. Except for the shoulder and the leg, you know. Just, just, just a little aside, Bob. Can you just see Paul Harvey going, Steerite! Well, <laughs> yes, I could. I, 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 I could see that, except I, I thought that Paul was, you know, anti-labor. <laughs> Bob, does anybody realize that this layoff situation works contrary to any dr anti-drug effort, or anti-homeless effort, for that matter? Anti-everything. Anti-everything. Isn't that amazing? Does yes. anybody realize that? It's, it's, it just, it's a, a spiraling, snowballing, call it whatever you want, effect that can have no good whatsoever. Any company that does something like, like that to increase profits, I can see to, to, for the survival of the company. 
if it's a situation where it's, it's genuinely not for the, the survival, survival. Though, Bob. No, it's for incre increased profit. They're doing fine. They're doing fantastically. Well, I, mean, I don't know how they fine they're doing. Fantastically, why can't they take it out of somebody else's pocket that can maybe afford it a little bit? Because then the people might not be so apt to go and look for the profit motive because there is another profit motive to drug dealing. I mean, the profit motive is not being able to afford the things that you want. I don't know who in the hell these people think their you know, clientele is, but they're not going to get Donald Trump and uh, Lee Iacocca and, hell, even Lasseter to, to be eating a lot more at Burger King. They're hurting their actual clientele. Well, do you, do you think it's in any way, though, a rebuttal, a rebuttal to this minimum wage thing? No. Do you think it's a political statement by Burger King No, at all? not at all. You think it's just... Uh, it's them, a, it's just... a very typical move after a corporate takeover. Mm -hmm. You come in and you just lash here or there in the other place. Well, it is putting them in the, in the news, though. It is putting them in the news. It's free advertising. I'm, I'm not playing their side, but I'm saying that they might look at it this way. They haven't been in the news for a while. When, when can you last remember Burger King in the news now? It's a terrible way to do it. Oh, I, I, I doubt very much if this is their PR department's uh, idea of a good way to get some free press. Well, see, the point is, though, Bob, is a lot of people they don't might start see... might the PR department to fire people. Well, they don't dig in like, like you and I are digging in and the rest of your callers today. Fantastic show, by the way. Great callers. But uh, they, the, the people just see Burger King in the headlines, okay? They see Burger King in the headlines. Oh, it's subliminal now. Now I'm going to get a Whopper on the way home. They don't know why they saw Burger King. Well, that's what I'm here for, to make sure they do understand. Well, that's it, Bob. I think we should all go in, you know, sing a chorus of Alice's Restaurant, maybe, get a Whopper. What do you think about that? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Hey, Bob? Yeah? One more thing. Yeah? Wrestling is frivolous. You asked in the beginning of the show, you know, if any of these are frivolous, let me know. I happen to think that wrestling is frivolous. Well, fake, whatever. We'll just see what the rest of the audience feels about that. All right, Bob. Take care. Off it is now to Rusk and I. Rusk, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Bob, how can you question Miss Elizabeth falling for the hulkster? I didn't, sir. I, I said, you know, the, the, the mere thought of it would be so ludicrous as to prove I mean, after there all, may be something to this, uh, you know, suspicion about pro wrestling. I mean, after all, I mean, Macho Man Savage isn't exactly Robert Redford nor the Rhodes Scholar. Yeah, but you see, I have sat. I have sat within 10 feet of that woman without makeup on. Uh -huh. She is one of the most stunning women you'll ever want to see. She actually looks far, far, far better, believe it or not, without the hair all done up and without the makeup. Oh, I see. Stunning uh -huh. woman. All right. About the bridges falling down. Uh, enough, to, enough to almost make me, well, not leave Mary, but ask if I could keep Miss Elizabeth, too. Okay. The bridges fell down in Tennessee. Yeah. I've been across that about 200 times in the last 20 years. Ah, uh, must have given you a nice feeling yesterday, yes, it huh? Did. It was falling apart 10 years ago. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Then they expanded the highway up there to make it a four lane instead of two lane. Then they built another bridge parallel to the old one. They were going to close the old one, and they, their thinking was, well, we've uh, absorbed 50% of the traffic on it by opening the other bridge. But what they didn't consider is they, all, they doubled the traffic going back and forth from the north to Memphis. You know, because of it, now they've made it the four-lane highway. Well, there's something else, though, that we're not considering in this country, and that is that we're far more likely to die from a bridge collapsing underneath us than we are to die from the communist onslaught. My travels back and forth across the country, especially on I-10, the bridges across Louisiana are just falling apart. Every time I go through there, there's some sort of construction or, or whatever going on, and I can guarantee you, you know, if Rockwell... McDonnell Douglas went into the construction business tomorrow, you'd see all kinds of bridge renovations all over the country. As a matter of fact, one might start, what, between Sand Key and uh, Clearwater? That might be a good place for it. Yeah. One shot at Burger King. Uh -huh. In the retirement areas, one thing I've noticed about Burger King, they have what they call the sunshine card. It gives the retirement, the senior citizens, a 15% discount. But what they don't tell everybody is that they hike up their prices across the board about 20% in each one of those restaurants where they give the sunshine 15%. are all uh, working against everybody's best interest, including their own. All right. One question. Yeah. You go in and you buy a cheeseburger at Burger King, or you buy a hamburger, it costs you 70 cents. You buy a cheeseburger, it costs you 80 cents. You go in and buy a Whopper for a buck 80, and then when you turn around and get a Whopper with cheese, it's two bucks. How come that piece of cheese goes up twice as much when you buy a Whopper? Whatever the traffic will bear, I suppose. Well, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. It's upset my day. Something terrible. Jeez, Thanks, maybe, Bob. Maybe, maybe it used to go into employing those 500 people that they're going to dump now. And that's true. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Amazing. You'd have thought that perhaps they could have come up with a way of just slicing the cheese thinner so that the people could have kept their jobs. Tampa, you're on there at 970 WFLA. Hello, is this me, Ted? Uh, yep. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Fine. Uh, say, listen, uh, I tuned in late on your show, but as far as pro wrestling, I respect those guys, man. Those guys are in condition. I'm, I'm not in that kind of condition. 
And I'm not going to call them fake because, you know, they, they do things to me. I, 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 don't, I don't know, sir. It would seem to me that, um, you know, if you want to talk about wrestlers being in condition, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, sir, is probably a little flabbier than I am. <laughs> hey, listen, the reason I called, you know, uh, it, it, um, it is a little bit uh, away from the subject, but uh, WFLA is real big where I work, and we work in an enclosed type of environment, you know, where it's a big structure. Mm -hmm. And we have trouble getting the AM signal. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a friend of yours works down in, uh, you know, Miami, Neil, and he was on FM for a while. Right. So I, I thought you would be the right person who could maybe tell me something. How come uh, has the WFLA talked about an FM daytime station or a whole cup where they play music at night? Because there's so many people that work in offices that just can't get the, the, the signal on the AM radios. Well, I can't speak for j or for WFLA, but I will speak for myself, and I'll sure. also speak for what I've heard. Uh, I have obviously suggested it. Well, I shouldn't say obviously. How the hell would you know? Yeah. Uh, I have suggested it. Uh, what it boils down to is that, and this is, this is I'm really painting with a broad brush uh, on this, but at least across the country, there are fewer and fewer people in this business who are broadcasters and more and more and more who are speculators who buy and sell radio properties. Uh, they have driven the cost of FM stations to such a point where you can't make a mistake, or at least the people who are running them feel as though they can't make a mistake. They just can't afford to gamble. Yeah. And so traditionally, talk radio appeals to an older demographic, uh, really a, a 49 plus, sometimes even a 55 plus, and there are only a handful of stations in the country, this one being one of them, that truly have 25, 54 numbers uh, in, in any kind. And it's just, it's one of those things that people just haven't thought about, believe it or not. But I'll tell you, though, uh, the people that, uh, you, you, you know, for instance, you drive through Tampa, see all the big office buildings, they cannot get a good, F and they could get a good FM signal, but they can't get well, the right. name in there. Well, right, the steel structure just kind of... Yeah, it ruins it, you know. And for us, you know, like, we have to walk outside during a break to listen to it, or we have to walk around with our headsets on trying to find the right position. Well, believe it or not, it's, it's a matter of, of either gutless management, foolish management, or stupid management, and that's what it boils down to. Okay, now you have, uh, you have a rock radio station locally, you know. I'm, I'm not going to talk about them other than they have, you know, an AM and FM. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently they're successful that way. Are you talking about RBQ? Uh, the big, uh, what do they call it? Yeah, RBQ, Q105. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, they have an AM and an FM. Yeah, but they can't be the richest, you know, company in the whole world. But now, as far as, like, you know, WFLA, you're going big as far as, like, uh, you know, changing over. You have a good audience. You have well, a... you see, there's another thing, too. It takes a long time to establish an FM talk uh, format in the market, and it's not easy to start because you're, you're talking two to three years of starving yeah. and if you're not used to uh, an fm or excuse me if you're not used to a talk radio format uh as a general manager your days are spent primarily sitting on the phone talking to irate little old ladies and irate ministers and yeah. and irate clients and so mm. forth and so on it takes a long time to establish the format my friend i must run okay Bob. hope that answered hey. your question at least you know to a degree don richard standing by at the wfla news desk st petersburg police investigating the murder of a young woman whose body was found you're a freshly dug hole in the backyard this afternoon. Tell Retail outlets do not own most of them. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and they could certainly write a letter to the franchise owner at the same time that they complained. Well, the there manager. are so many ways, effective ways, of letting the Burger King people know your displeasure without silly boycotts and, and genuinely disruptive and, and non-productive ways. Well, a boycott wouldn't accomplish anything. It would Hell put more no. people out of work. Exactly, and that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to do is put people back to work. Yeah, and the thing that gets me is that uh, even though I'm uh, mostly Republican, <laughs> I definitely uh, am against the uh, the idea of, of having all these leveraged buyouts uh, on it. I think it's ruined and will be the ruination of our economy on that uh because it's going to put enough people out of work, and it's already done so. These companies have tremendous debt. Something's got to give somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. And uh, But when we allowed them to start uh, <laughs> doing what they're doing and taking that off their taxes, why... Well, it wasn't a case of allowing. It was almost encouraging with, yeah. the, with the way the taxes are set up. It was almost in encouraging these people to do this. Right. Well, I mean, if, if, this, if this English company wanted to come into this country and drop four or five or ten or whatever, how many billions of dollars they spent opening up new restaurants and a, a new uh, 
food distribution center, et cetera, et cetera. That's real investment. That would have been great. Mm -hmm. But to come in and speculate in stock is not investment. No, no, no. That, that's for sure. And so many of them are doing well. I, <laughs> I'm sitting here as a result of a leveraged buyout and uh, with a company that was acquired by another company. And uh, as a result, well, I took early retirement. You were lucky. Yeah, I was very lucky in that. Not sure everybody was. has retirement to take. But uh, all of the uh, all of the uh, employees of the formerly <clears throat> old company that was taken over are now out. That just, was took them about two and a half years. I just don't know why it is that a nation can get all excited about some genuinely deserved pay raises for judges and Congress people and federal executives that would have worked out to about twelve cents per capita was was the genuine cost in this country. And yet this other stuff goes on that has a real effect on their lives, a tremendous effect on their lives, and nobody seems to notice. Well, the, the one caller you had before uh, that spoke about the human side of business, uh, the larger these companies become and the more speculators, they, there's no human side to them. I'm not so callous as to say that a, an investor has no interest. An investor does have an interest, but the investor and the employee have got to stand shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have both got to take the hit in the bad times, and they, they sure do. seem to me that that's the real American way, I would think. Well, I'm certainly glad you brought the subject up. It, uh, <laughs> it made me give you a call today. Well, I thank you very much. I'm glad you take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy that retirement there. Ah, uh, brings us to the end of yet another one, a Monday in April, when you have to realize that you did lose that hour. Messed up my life all about 3 o'clock. Until then, behave yourselves now, would you?